in the city of Tokyo recently appeared a thief who knows how to use magic named Kaidu Kid. The police force was involved, but they could not catch the super thief. As soon as he entered the classroom, Kaido immediately greeted his best friend, Ayako. Kaido's head suddenly fell from his neck and flew in front of Ayako. But it's actually just a fake head, and Kaido's real head is looking at Ayako's panties. Ayako gets angry and attacks Kaido in the classroom. Even though the class had already started, the teacher couldn't do anything about these two because they answered every question correctly. Kaido is so good at magic tricks that Ayako can't catch him, and Ayako thinks that the thief who knows magic, Kaido Kid, is definitely much better than Kaido. By some miracle, Ayako succeeded in catching Kaido, but it was a classmate, and Kaido was standing on the podium with the teacher. Kaido asked the teacher's permission to be absent today to look for Kaido Kid because he wanted to compete with him to see who was better at magic. Ayako's father is the famous inspector Jinzo in the city. He has dedicated his life to catching the Kaido Kid. Kaido Kids disappeared eight years ago but recently suddenly reappeared. But Kaido found it very strange because eight years ago was also the time when his father died in an accident. Kaido's father was originally one of the five most famous magicians in the world, and the magic tricks Kaido knows now were all taught by him. As soon as he touched the picture of his father in the room, Kaido suddenly fell into a secret room. He discovered that there were a lot of modern tools here. He realizes that his father has set up this room to wait until he finds it. Ayako is feeling very annoyed at being teased by Kaido every day, so she calls Kaido's mother to ask what his weakness is. Meanwhile, Kaido has found a white suit in the secret room, and coincidentally, this suit is very similar to the one Kaido Kid usually wears. Kaido decides to go find the Kaido Kid to find out the identity of his father. That night, Inspector Jinzo ordered the police force to blockade the museum because Kaido Kid announced that he was going to steal a gem worth 400 million yen. Kaido Kid disguised himself as a police officer and turned off all the lights on the museum hospital. When the police could not see anything, Kaido Kid took the stone and ran away. Kaido Kid rushed out the window to Jinzo's surprise, but it was actually just a doll, while Kaido Kid climbed onto the rooftop. However, Kaido had already guessed Kaido Kid's move, so he was already waiting for him on the rooftop. Kaido Kid made his body invisible, making Kaido feel a bit confused. Kaido later discovered that Kaido Kid had wrapped a mirror around his body to create an illusion, so he easily defeated Kaido Kid by destroying the mirror. Kaido was surprised to learn that this Kaido Kid was his father's housekeeper, Jill. Jill revealed that Kaido's father was actually murdered by a mysterious organization, so Jill disguised himself as Kaido Kid with the aim of attracting the attention of the mysterious organization and then avenging Kaido's father. At the same time, Kaido suddenly learns that his father used to be the super thief Kaido Kid. Soon after, Jinzo and the police force move to the rooftop, so Kaido tried to distract them and let Jill escape. Kaido decides that from now on he will become the Kaido Kid to investigate the death of his father. After returning home, Kaido called his mother and blamed her for not telling him that his father was Kaido Kid. But Kaido's mother was busy hanging out with friends, so she hung up. Right after that, Ayako suddenly called Kaido over to her house for dinner. She knew that Kaido was afraid of fish, so she asked her father to cook raw fish to get revenge on him. While panicking, Kaido accidentally dropped a gem into the fish's mouth. Jinzo was about to peck the fish when the gem fell out, much to his surprise. Jill owns a sizable pub, but he's turned it into Kaido's headquarters of operations. A doctor named Agasa helped Jill create the devices that Kaido was using. In class, Kaido enjoyed reading articles written about Kaido Kid, but Ayako hated Kaido Kid because her father always had to lose sleep looking for him. Ayako reveals that today is her birthday, but Jinzo went to investigate the Kaido Kid. Kaido promises to come perform magic tricks at her birthday party. Kaido's target that night was the sapphire called the Blue Birthday of India, so Jinzo placed an iron cage with a laser system around the gem. Jinzo believes that Kaido Kid can't get past his trap system. However, Kaido now broke into the ceiling, punched a hole in the ceiling, and dropped a tiny device into the iron cage, which then activated it to expand into him. Jinzo thought it was the real Kaido kid, so he opened the cage and ordered the police to attack Kaido. When Jinzo realized it was just a dummy, Kaido had already obtained the gem. But Jinzo was overjoyed after Kaido got the sapphire because he secretly attached a tracking device to it. Meanwhile, Kaido has escaped to the rooftop and is preparing to go to Ayako's house to attend her birthday party. When Kaido was about to use a paraglider to leave, someone suddenly opened fire on him. Kaido's attacker was a man named Snake, with many men behind him. Kaido was surprised to find out that these mysterious people were the ones who killed his father. 
but they still seem to think that the Kaido kid standing in front of them is Kaido's father. Snake asks Kaido to give him the sapphire, but Snake still opened fire on Kaido, even though he gave him the sapphire. Ayako is currently having a birthday party with her friends at her house, and everyone is wondering why Kaido hasn't come yet. Snake brings the sapphire to the organization, and it seems his boss is searching for a gem called Pandora. Pandora is rumored to bring immortality to its owners, but Snake doesn't know which stone is Pandora, so they just have to check them one by one. It is rumored that the inside of the Pandora stone will emit a red aura if it is illuminated by moonlight. However, they discover that this sapphire is a fake, and Kaido suddenly appears with the real sapphire after hearing all the secrets about Pandora. It turns out Snake hit the sapphire in Kaido's pocket, so he was lucky to survive. He realized the blue birthday gem was not Pandora gem, so Kaido threw it in the boss's face. Kaido vows to find Pandora before them and leaves. Genzo had led many policemen to surround this place thanks to the signal emitted by the positioning chip. But the mysterious organization managed to escape through a secret tunnel before the police stormed inside. Ayako's birthday party is over, and Kaido thinks he can't make it in time for Ayako's birthday party. Ayako was upset when Kaido suddenly called her. She blames Kaido for breaking her promise. However, Kaido told Ayako to look out the window. He created a projection on a large building and then wrote a happy birthday to Ayako. He even prepared a fireworks display that made Ayako very excited. Kaido's first target is an expensive painting by Picasso at an art exhibition. Kaido went to an ice rink with Ayako near the art exhibition to observe the situation. But Kaido doesn't know how to skate and becomes a laughing stock for Ayako. That evening, Jinzo and the police force came to guard the painting after receiving a letter of challenge from Kaido. In this case, there is a talented detective who has just returned from England named Hakuba. Even though Jinzo doesn't like young detectives, he still has to let Hakuba take part in the case because he's the son of his superiors. Kaido now knocks down a policeman and disguises himself as him. He then successfully broke into the exhibition area. When it was time for the appointment, Kaido blew smoke across the room and stole the painting. The police rushed to search for the painting, not knowing that Kaido had just put a layer of paper on it. While Kaido was taking the painting, Hakuba suddenly appeared. It seems that Hakuba can guess all of Kaido's plans. However, Kaido managed to get the painting, so he used a paraglider to escape. But due to the strong wind, Kaido was blown to Jinzo by the wind. Jinzo immediately runs there, sees that there are two Kaido kids there, and wonders who is real. Upon seeing Kaido fall, Jinzo thought that Kaido Kid couldn't skate so badly, so they rushed to catch his dummy. The next day, Kaido was surprised to see Hakuba transfer to his school. Ayako just won two concert tickets. She invited Kaido to go to the concert with her, but Kaido refused. Hakuba volunteered to go with Ayako and mocked Kaido for being too stupid to refuse the invitation of a beautiful girl like Ayako. But Kaido mocks Hakuba, saying that he's a bad detective for not being able to catch the Kaido Kid. Hakuba bets Kaido that if he catches Kaido Kid, he'll go to a concert with Ayako. If Hakuba fails, then Kaido will go to the concert with her. Although Kaido has no interest in going to the concert, he accepts the bet because he doesn't want to lose to Hakuba. That night, Kaido announced that he would take the statue of the goddess from the museum. In addition to the police force, Hakuba also participated in this case to be able to catch Kaido Kid. The top of the museum was cordoned off everywhere by the police, so Kaido broke in through the basement, even though the place was a bit full of lasers. Today's Kaido Kid Siege is being shown live on TV. Kaido was climbing to the top with a rope when Hakuba suddenly appeared. Hakuba released an extremely large amount of anesthetic gas into the basement. But when Hakuba was about to put on the gas mask, Kaido shot down his mask. Hakuba and Kaido then tried to fight over that gas mask. Hakuba suddenly climbs up from the basement and tells Jinzo that he has captured Kaido Kid. However, when they ran down to the basement, the police discovered Hakuba fainting there. It turns out Kaido was disguised as Hakuba. He planned to drag the statue out of the museum with a balloon, but it was locked by Hakuba with an iron chain. Jinzo bursts Kaido's balloon, causing him to be pushed into the sky. In the end, Hakuba and Kaido were both hospitalized after the incident, so Ayako had to go to the concert with her father. A witch named Ikako asked the magic mirror who's the fairest one of all. Magic mirror replied that Ikako was beautiful, but she failed to win the heart of the Kaido kid. Today is Valentine's Day, so many girls have brought chocolates to give to boys. When Ayako was about to give Kaido chocolates, Kaido ran away. Akako is a new transfer student to this school, and she has such great beauty that the boys flock to her to ask for her chocolate. 
Soon after, Kaido returned to class with a lot of chocolate he had just received from the girls. Kaido was about to run over to ask for Akako's chocolate when he was pinned to the wall by her. Akako wants Kaido to throw away all the other girls' chocolates if he wants hers, but Kaido refuses, much to Akako's shock. Akako quickly realizes that Kaido is the Kaido Kid because Kaido Kid is the only man unaffected by her alluring beauty. Akako was originally a member of a witch family that existed hundreds of years ago. After returning home, Akako began making charms so that she could turn Kaido into her servant. Kaido's target that night was a red ruby. But as soon as Kaido approached the ruby gem, the police force released anesthetic gas and surrounded him. Kaido was about to run away when Akako used nail magic on Kaido's doll, causing him pain. Despite this, Kaido still managed to escape the police siege and get to Jill's place. But Akako continued to use magic to pull Kaido up into the sky. Kaido then saw Akako flying towards him with an extremely large flock of crows. Akako tells Kaido that she soon discovered his true identity. She dropped Kaido into a magic circle she had placed on the ground. She controlled Kaido's body so that he couldn't move. Akako even created a flame around Kaido to force him to become her servant. Akako had already forced Kaido to eat chocolate that was enchanted by her. But just as it was snowing, Kaido suddenly took control of his body. It turns out that the witch's magic loses its effect whenever it snows. Because she couldn't use magic anymore, Akako had to accept defeat. Kaido advised Akako to stop seducing men with magic and leave. But it seems Akako still won't give up on making Kaido her man. There are currently a lot of girls who want to start a fan club for Kaido Kid. But Ayako doesn't understand how they can be so fanatical about a thief. When reading the newspaper, Ayako learns that this time Kaido Kid will steal the clock in front of the train station. Ayako doesn't want Kaido Kid to steal the clock because it has a lot of memories for her. But in the near future, that watch will also be removed by the government. So many people think that even if Kaido Kid takes it, it will not affect anything. That night, the police force sealed off the entire train station area to protect the clock, and the station manager knew that what Kaido Kid wanted was the jewel on the clock's hand. However, the manager has secretly sold that gem for a long time, and he is planning to demolish this old station to build an amusement park. While many people are excited to see Kaido Kid, Ayako is against him. Kaido disguised himself as a police officer to sneak inside the train station. Just then, a helicopter flew over from nowhere. Akako sensed that there was a very dangerous person on that helicopter. An officer questioned his name and police card number when Kaido entered the station. Even though Kaido had read the card number correctly, they were still able to detect him. It turns out that a young man told the police that Kaido Kid always remembers every little detail of the person he is dressing up with. Thanks to that young man's tip, the police continuously found Kaido's hiding place. Even Kaido was surprised at the sudden intelligence of the policeman. The person in control of the helicopter was Inspector Megir from another area, and the young man sitting with him was none other than Super Detective Kyudu Shinishi. But Jinzo doesn't want Shinishi involved in this case because he wants to be Kaido Kid's only rival. Kaido gave out hundreds of gas cylinders that he had arranged earlier to release smoke all over the station as soon as the clock struck 12 o'clock at night. As soon as the smoke cleared, the two hands of the clock also disappeared, to everyone's surprise. But when he ran up to the clock, Jinzo saw that Kaido was still there. Shinishi realized that Kaido had placed a large clock-shaped cloth to hide the real clock, so he cut off each of the cloth's ties to force Kaido to reveal himself. However, Kaido shot down the cloth and jumped after it to escape without being detected. Everyone suddenly sees some strange code on the clock left by Kaido, so the clock tower at the station will not be destroyed until the code is decoded. Shinishi realized that Kaido did it because he wanted to protect the clock. It turns out that the clock tower in front of this station is the place where Ayako first met Kaido, so Kaido wants to protect it just like her. Days later, Kaido broke into the museum to steal the angel's crown. When Kaido was about to get the crown, Jinzo and the police force appeared. Kaido had to withdraw and promised that he would come back this Sunday night to get it. Jinzo now felt that Kaido Kid's face was very familiar. The next night, while having dinner, Jinzo kept glancing at Kaido. Kaido had just returned home when Jinzo revealed to Ayako that he was most likely the Kaido Kid. However, Ayako immediately objected, as she did not believe Kaido was a thief. The next morning, Ayako suddenly asked Kaido out on a date with her this Sunday, much to Kaido's surprise. But Kaido suddenly realized that it was also the day he was going to steal the crown. It turned out that Ayako was trying to check if Kaido was the Kaido kid, so she asked him out on that day. Kaido also realizes that Ayako and Jinzo are suspecting that he is the Kaido kid. Kaido will have to commit the theft while dating Ayako to remove suspicion from them. 
On Sunday morning, Kaido was at the park to go on a date with Ayako. The two of them enjoyed eating and playing games in this place together. When it started to get dark, Ayako asked Kaido to go see a 3D movie. That was also when Kaido had to commit the theft, but Ayako suddenly handcuffed Kaido into hers so he couldn't escape. However, while Ayako was watching a movie, Kaido took off the handcuffs and left a doll there. He rushed to the museum to get the angel crown, as promised. The police force was standing guard when Kaido threw an anesthetic bomb that made them unconscious. But Kaido was about to take the crown when Jinzo suddenly came out and grabbed him. Jinzo tried to take off Kaido's hat to see his real face, but Kaido promptly changed his face to Ayako's, much to Jinzo's surprise. Kaido revealed that he can disguise himself as anyone including Jinzo's relatives. After getting the crown, Kaido disappeared like the wind, but Kaido still needed to return to the cinema before Ayako realized that the person sitting next to her was just a doll. Because time was running out, Kaido got on a roller coaster to get back to the cinema. As soon as he reached the location of the cinema, he released his hand from the roller coaster and fell freely to the bottom. Kaido fell right into his seat as soon as the movie ended. In the end, Kaido Kid was still stealing normally while Kaido was going on a date with Ayako, so Ayako was now certain that Kaido wasn't Kaido Kid. Years ago, a female thief named Phantom Lady broke into the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Her aim is to steal a motorcycle with a jewel attached. But Kaido's father, the magician Toichi, suddenly appeared to stop her actions. Toichi knew that this motorcycle belonged to a famous French racer. He advised Phantom Lady not to touch this motorcycle because he definitely had a trap on it. However, this stubborn girl still did not follow Toich's advice. This motorcycle shoots out a handcuff that locks her hand. Soon after, a mafia member named Gozo led his juniors to deal with the Phantom Lady for daring to sabotage their business plans. But Toichi drove her motorcycle straight out of this hundred meter tall tower. Seeing Phantom Lady panicking, Toichi locked her lips. Phantom Lady later married the magician Toichi and gave birth to Kaido. Back in the present, Kaido's mother said that her old enemies were still using old tricks to make money illegally, so she wanted to ask Kaido to help her bring them to justice. Gozo's gang used to steal real antiques and make lots of similar fakes to sell to collectors, but Kaido's mother stole their fakes and reported them to the police. Kaido decided that he would bring the scammers to justice to help his mother. Days later, the police station received a letter from Kaido saying that he wanted to return some of the artifacts. The artifacts that Kaido wanted to return were a pistol and an antique portrait porcelain bowl. Jinzo wanted to take this opportunity to trap Kaido Kid. He learned that the current owner of the museum was an old advisor of the Suzuki Corporation named Suzuki Jirakichi. The police then tightened security in the museum to wait for Kaido Kid to return the artifact, but Kaido still easily broke into the place thanks to his disguise as a policeman. Everyone is now gathered in this place to watch the appearance of Kaido Kid. A man had just dropped a water bottle in it and was immediately caught by the police, so Kaido realized that the police had already set up an ambush to arrest anyone they suspected. Kaido was walking around when he suddenly ran into Conan, who was a shrunken Shinishi. Conan's group came here because Zan's friend Sonoko really wanted to see the super thief Kaido kid. With Conan present, Kaido realized that this mission would not be easy to carry out, so Kaido told Jill to temporarily withdraw to discuss the plan more carefully. Kaido then sends a letter informing Conan that he will return the artifact at 8am tomorrow, and that he will perform a huge magic show to also amaze Conan. That night, Kaido, Jinzo, and Ayako watch the situation at the museum through television. Jinzo believes that Kaido Kid wants to wait until it rains before proceeding with his plan. Of course, it was Conan who told Jinzo about Kaido's plan, Jinzo was far from coming up with that. Jinzo said the museum's curators are two old men named Tarumi and Hanamura. Jinzo had set up a metal detector to detect the pistol that Kaido Kid was carrying, but he did not expect that the information would be heard by Kaido without missing a word. Moments later, the police caught a fat guy cosplaying Kaido Kid in front of the museum gate. Kaido took advantage of the chaos disguised as a fat man to break in. Kaido was watching the location that was prepared for him to return when Conan suddenly appeared, startling him. Kaido quickly went to the toilet for fear that if he stood there for a long time, Conan would notice him. Kaido took out the antiques hidden in his jacket, but when he looked into the next room, Kaido was surprised to see Conan searching for something online. Kaido took the opportunity to lock the toilet door to lock Conan there. As soon as he got out, Conan suddenly saw two curators whispering something while Kaido Kid had sneaked into the crowd, so Conan couldn't see him anymore. The two curators showed no signs of concern when they heard that Kaido Kid had broken into the museum. 
It seemed that Conan had guessed something from the two old men's attitudes. Jill disguised herself as a middle-aged woman to support Kaido. After realizing Kaido's true intentions, Conan decided to withdraw from the case. Right after that, Kaido appeared in a familiar white suit, making everyone very excited. Then he lit a match and spit out a flame that made the fire alarm system spray water all over the room. Kaido then slowly disappeared into the steam to everyone's surprise, but actually Kaido disguised himself as a fat man so he could escape. Soon after, the two curators suddenly said that Kaido Kid had swapped some of the artifacts in this place with fakes, but Jinzo suddenly saw a message that Kaido Kid had left there. Kaido had just gone outside when he ran into Conan. Conan knows that the two curators want to use Kaido's opportunity to break in here to steal some antiques and then blame him. Those two old men were also the people who specialized in making fake antiques for sale that Kaido's mother wanted to deal with. Those antiques were bought and sold illegally, so no one dared report them to the police. Kaido left the museum with a bunch of fake antiques that his mother had stolen before, so the owner of the museum called the police to arrest two old curators for investigation. It turned out that Conan soon discovered that the man in front of him was Kaido Kid because the man had a very fat body but his legs were extremely small. Conan had a chip attached to Kaido's body, so he was able to locate Kaido through the tracking glasses. But Conan will spare Kaido Kid this time because Kaido has done a good deed for society anyway. Kaido had left the museum as if nothing had happened. Kaido Kid hasn't appeared for three months since the event at the museum, so Jinzo is feeling very bored because he just wants to fight Kaido Kid. Some people think it's possible that Kaido Kid is sick. It's true that Kaido has been suffering from a headache and runny nose lately, but he temporarily stopped working because he wanted to give Jill a rest to cure his back pain. However, Ayako thought that Kaido Kid might be dead. Kaido Kid suddenly sends a letter to the police station saying that he will get the star on the top of the pine tree at the mall on Christmas Eve. But when he saw the police coming to the mall, Kaido didn't know what was going on. It turned out that director of the mall had forged Kaido Kid's letter to lure customers here. He forced his assistant to disguise himself as Kaido Kid to steal that star tonight. Kaido went to Ayako's house to help her decorate for the Christmas party without knowing anything. Jinzo is leading the force at the mall to capture Kaido Kid. That night, Ayako invited her classmates to have a Christmas party at her house. The people at the mall are excited to hear that Kaido Kid will return, and Inspector Jinzo is anxious to fight him. Everyone at Ayako's house had a very happy Christmas party, but when they heard that Jinzo was going to catch Kaido Kid, Kaido suddenly felt something was wrong. Kaido turned on the TV to see the situation at the mall, and director prepared a full range of Kaido Kid-related items for sale to those who came to see the event. Knowing the situation, Kaido left the party to go to the mall. Assistant was now clinging to the rope ladder and was taken by helicopter to the Christmas tree, but the audience below still cheered because they thought he was Kaido Kid. However, as soon as he landed on the top of the pine tree, Assistant was scared and asked to withdraw from this case. Director promised to increase Assistant's salary after it was all over. When Assistant was about to take the star and leave, Jinzo and the policeman climbed up the pine tree to arrest him. Faced with this situation, Director pretended not to know Assistant. Soon after that, Kaido suddenly appeared beside the star to everyone's surprise, and Kaido said that he came here to steal the star, just like Director's fake announcement. Kaido created an explosion at the foot of the Christmas tree, causing it to fall into the mall building. He once again escaped in the presence of Jinzo, but he left a Christmas greeting that made him feel very happy too. Kaido then returns to Ayako's house to continue the party with everyone. Kaido put the star he just stole on the Christmas tree in Ayako's house. Today, Kaido's class was held skiing, but Ayako doesn't know how to ski, so she constantly collides with Kaido. Ayako still hadn't given up on seducing Kaido. The teacher announced that their class would hold a skiing competition tonight. Contestants must pair up to be a man and a woman to enter the contest, so Ayako plans to pair up with Kaido. Soon after, Akako met Ayako privately and revealed that she herself was pursuing Kaido. She asks Ayako to stay away from Kaido because only she deserves to be paired with him tonight. But Ayako finds it amusing that a beautiful girl like Akako likes a crazy guy like Kaido. However, Akako is quite good at skiing, so Ayako thinks that she would make a better pairing with Kaido. Ayako was sitting and thinking when she suddenly saw a classmate trying to chase Akako. It turns out that Fuji really likes Akako but doesn't have the confidence to pair up with her because of his fat appearance. Ayako saw that Fuji seemed to be as bad at skiing as herself, so Ayako asked Fuji to pair up with her. Kaido was skiing when Akako suddenly passed by and placed a love charm on his back. But Kaido then still showed coldness towards Akako and went to talk to Ayako. 
Kaido thought that Ayako hadn't paired up yet, so Kaido suggested pairing up with her. But when Kaido learned that Ayako was paired with Fuji, he had to find another girl. Akako invited Kaido to ride the cable car and took the opportunity to ask to pair up with him. Although Kaido accepts Akako's invitation, he doesn't seem to be happy. That evening, everyone gathered to organize a skiing competition. Fuji and Ayako decide that they will disguise themselves as Kaido Kid and Jinzo to impress. Kaido suddenly discovered the love charm that Akako cocked behind his back. Knowing that Fuji really wanted to be paired with Akako, Kaido gave him Akako's charm to him. Right after that, the skiing competition officially started. Everyone disguised themselves as all sorts of characters they liked and started the ski competition looking downright funny. Akako made a splendid appearance with a man disguised as a monster, but Ayako thought that the person in the monster suit was Kaido, so she went to cheer him on. However, when she saw Akako skiing happily with Kaido, she felt a little jealous. Ayako had just yelled at Kaido when he suddenly appeared in a Kaido Kid outfit. Turns out Kaido let Fuji go skiing with Akako. In the blink of an eye, Kaido transformed Ayako into a princess to pair up with her. Ayako doesn't know how to ski, so Kaido picked her up and skied straight to the finish line. Akako couldn't believe he dared to disguise himself as Kaido Kid to participate in this competition. Kaido and Akako put on a great performance in front of everyone's admiration, so the two of them won first place in the pair skiing competition this time. Akako didn't expect that Kaido tricked her into pairing up with Fuji. The queen of the Ingram Kingdom is sitting on a train to go to Japan. Kaido Kid announced that he was going to steal the jewel she was carrying, so the Japanese government sent Jinzo to protect her. However, Queen said that the jewel she was wearing was actually a fake. As for the real gem, she is hiding it somewhere else. On this trip, the Queen also brought her child, Philip. Kaido boarded this train with Ayako in search of a chance to get the Queen's jewel. But coincidentally, Snake is also here to get that gem at the behest of his boss. Except for the Queen, no one knows where the jewel is kept. The Queen invited Jinzo to drink some wine from Europe, which made him drunk. Ayako really wanted to meet the Queen, so she dragged Kaido over to greet her. Kaido wanted to take this opportunity to find the location of the real gem. Kaido and Ayako were chatting when Philip suddenly appeared to talk to them. Kaido suspects the Queen has hidden the gem inside Philip's teddy bear, so Kaido borrows it to check. Seeing Kaido's actions, Philip guessed that Kaido was Kaido Kid. Soon after, the servant came to call Philip to his room, but the boy refused. Philip thinks that since his father's death, the Queen hasn't treated him like she used to. The Queen was furious and carried Philip back to her room when she saw that he would not obey. The Queen locked Philip in his room and kept him from running around. The Queen then continued to return to the table to drink with Jinzo. After observing for a while, Kaido also realized where the Queen kept the jewel. Kaido pretended to go to the bathroom to start the plan. He put a sleeping pill in Ayako's glass of water because he didn't want to steal in front of her. Kaido cut off the electricity on the train, causing everyone to panic. When Jinzo and the Queen looked up, they were surprised to see dozens of wine glasses on the table. The Queen sent someone to find Jinzo's wine glass because the real gem was hidden in it. When the Queen had just found the jewel, Kaido shot the jewel to steal it. After getting what he needed, Kaido flew away in Jinzo's helplessness. What flew away was actually just Kaido's doll, but somehow Philip knew that Kaido was on top of the train. The boy asked Kaido to return the jewel. However, Snake suddenly appeared and took Philip hostage. He asked Kaido to hand over the jewel to him in exchange for Philip. Kaido did as Snake asked, but he still wanted to kill Kaido. However, the train suddenly entered a tunnel, causing him to jump off the train. Kaido learns that Philip wants to take back the jewel himself in order to be praised by his mother. Kaido had devised a way to test whether the queen really still loved Philip. Philip later returned to the queen and revealed that he had just chased Kaido Kid onto the roof of the train to retrieve the jewel. The queen angrily slapped Philip for not obeying. However, the queen happily hugged Philip when he saw that the boy had returned unharmed. The queen's jewel was placed on Ayako's cup by Kaido because it was not the Pandora. Days later, a foreign princess named and brought a very large diamond to Japan. Accompanying her is the most famous detective in Europe, Delon. Delon looks down on Jinzo when he learns that he has failed to capture the Kaido Kid multiple times. Delon challenged Kaido Kid to steal the princess diamond while under his supervision. When he saw Delon's challenge in the newspaper, Kaido was extremely angry. But Ayako worries that her father might be fired if Delon catches Kaido Kid. That afternoon, Kaido was returning from school when he saw Jinzo sitting by the riverside. 
It turned out that in this case, Delon pulled Jinzo off of Kid's task force. However, that night, Jinzo still mobilized forces to stand guard outside the princess's hotel, while Delon would command the European police force to guard inside the hotel. Taito disguised himself as an earl to easily break in. But Delon began to suspect him of being the Kaidu kid, so Delon sent someone to track him down. However, Kaido pretended to go to the bathroom and took the opportunity to knock down the guard. Kaido disguised himself as that policeman and tied himself up to trick Delon into thinking that Kaido kid was in the hall. Soon after, Kaido dressed as a European police officer and tricked all the police into gathering in the hall on the first floor. He even disguised himself as Delon and ordered them to leave this place, and is now bored alone in her room. After tricking the police into going down to the first floor, Kaido broke into An's bedroom. The police had filled the entire hall, making Delon very confused. He quickly realized that Kaido had tricked everyone down here. It turns out that An is a huge fan of Kaido. Kaido took advantage of that and said that he wanted An's help in performing a magic trick. He borrowed An's diamond for a while and promised to return it when he was done. Delon and the policeman had to squeeze inside the elevator to get back to the princess room. Delon immediately opened fire on a Kaido kid's doll flying outside the window, but he later hit Kaido after seeing the light from the diamond. However, Delon only hit the diamond, so Kaido was still safe. The whole room suddenly emitted a series of lights like the diamond, making it impossible for Delon to guess where Kaido was. As it turned out, Kaido had created these blobs with a tube lamp that glowed green. But Delon suddenly remembered that, in addition to the green color, the diamond's light also had a cross shape. Delon rushed towards the cross-shaped light but was tricked by Kaido to fall out of the window. After everything was over, Kaido said goodbye to him. Right after that, and suddenly ran down to inform Jinzo that Kaido Kid had just appeared in her room. But Jinzo discovered that it was Kaido Kid in disguise. However, Kaido managed to escape the police siege and disappear. He returned the diamond to Jinzo. But everyone thought that Jinzo got it from Kaido Kid, so he was honored as a hero for his great work. A few days later, Kaido suddenly received a challenge from Suzuki's advisor, Jirakichi. Kaido is determined to show the advisor how strong the super thief Kaido Kid is, but Kaido still couldn't think of a way to win against him. Everyone in the city was talking about the challenge between Jirakichi and Kaido. Kaido will have to steal a gem placed by Jirakichi on the roof of the museum. Jirakichi has hired more than 20 security helicopters to be able to protect the gem from the air. When looking at the camera, Kaido discovered that Conan will also assist Jirakichi in this case, so Kaido is determined to perform a magic trick that Conan can't even guess. The next night, everyone gathered in front of the museum to watch Kaido steal Jirakichi's stone. Jill disguised himself as a security plane pilot to assist Kaido with his magic trick. Kaido used a paraglider to fly out of the helicopter, to everyone's astonishment. After a while of preparation, Kaido suddenly appeared in mid-air as if he was flying. Jirakichi thought that Kaido was being hung by something, so he sent someone up to check, but Conan and the security team could not find any wire connected to Kaido's body. Kaido then slowly walked through the air to the front of the museum, but Kaido suddenly stopped the magic show and promised that he would come back the next night to get the gem. The next day, the number of people who came to see Kaido steal the gem was three times more numerous. It seems that Conan has discovered the secret behind Kaido's magic walking in the air. That night, Kaido continued to suddenly appear in the sky just like before. Jinzo and Jirakichi have yet to find out the secret of Kaido's magic trick. Jirakichi is forced to hide the gem inside the building before Kaido can get it. He will personally carry the gem out of here in case Kaido breaks into the building. However, Kaido disguised himself as Jirakichi to take the gem away without being stopped by anyone. When Kaido was happily riding his motorcycle, Conan was already sitting in the back seat. It turns out that Jirakichi always wears glasses when riding a motorcycle and Kaido doesn't, so Conan can easily recognize him. Conan knew that Kaido had a teammate who had infiltrated the security helicopter team, so that person flew the helicopter to lift Kaido into the air without anyone noticing. The fact that Conan hadn't seen any wire attached to Kaido before was because he used transparent wire. Kaido didn't expect his elaborate magic trick to be recognized by Conan so easily. He had to take off his mask as soon as Conan pointed a watch with an anesthetic needle at him. Kaido quickly removed the back seat of the vehicle, causing Conan to spin a few times on the road, but Conan still managed to shoot the car's gas tank, causing the gasoline to leak out. The vehicle was blown up, but Kaido managed to escape in time. Kaido was determined to come up with a magic trick that Conan couldn't know next time. Early in the morning, Ayako called Kaido over to her house for breakfast because Kaido's mother asked Ayako to wake him up every morning, 
even on a day off. But Kaido was eating when he suddenly saw Jirokichi continue to challenge him on TV. Jill revealed that the location of this mission was a pedestrian street, and the item that Jirokichi wanted Kaido to steal was a pair of high heels studded with amethyst stones. Kaido asked Ayako to go to the pedestrian street to explore the terrain here. It seemed like Jirokichi had set traps around the place, but after a closer look, Kaido realized what trap he intended to use. That night, Jirokichi displayed a pair of quartz heels right in the middle of the pedestrian street intersection. As soon as Kaido landed to get his high heel, he would have the police rush in to arrest him. Kaido was secretly standing in the crowd to observe the situation. He saw that Conan was also here. Right after that, Kaido flew a paraglider to the pedestrian street in front of everyone's excited cheers. After a huge explosion, Kaido landed on the high heels place. However, Jirokichi immediately put up four large nets, blocking all four corners of the pedestrian street intersection. He believes that Kaido won't be able to escape his trap but Kaido says that he will use teleportation to get out of here easily. As soon as he said that, Kaido disappeared, to everyone's surprise. He reappeared on the roof of a nearby building after about 20 seconds. However, Kaido realizes that the high heels he stole earlier are fake, so he promises that he will come back the next day to get the real shoes and leave. Conan kicked a ball past Kaido as a warning to him. Conan had been thinking all day about deciphering Kaido's teleportation trick. Heibara felt that Conan seemed to be very interested in this case. On the second night, Jirokichi was more careful, so he didn't let anyone into the place where the net was laid. But Kaido sent an announcement that he would not appear without an audience. Under Kaido's agitation, everyone got through the net and ran to the high heels. When things get chaotic, it's easier for Kaido to execute his tricks. Kaido's paraglider landed on the high heels, to the surprise of Jirokichi and Jinzo. After getting high heels, Kaido put on a black robe and ran as fast as he could to the foot of a building. Kaido gestured for Jill to pull him onto the roof of the building while no one noticed. When Kaido was smiling triumphantly, Conan was already waiting for him on the roof of the building. It turns out that Conan figured out that Jill helped pull Kaido up with a pulley. Kaido had moved with the words on a billboard, so it was difficult for others to spot him. Kaido didn't expect Conan to successfully break his trick again. After removing the cloak, Kaido quickly grabbed Jill and used a paraglider to leave. But Kaido still didn't forget to return the high heels because they weren't what he was looking for. Kaido once again lost to Conan, but it seems that Kaido's trick tonight also made Conan somewhat amused. 